Hello, I'm speaking to you today from a remote location. I am sorry I'm not able to be amongst you uh, physically, but I'm with you virtually. Before I start, let me observe the basic protocols by acknowledging the ambassadors for safe determination, the coalition of Biafran sons and daughters, the friends of Biafra gathered here today at the Washington Press Club, Washington DC, United States. I'm highly honored to be called upon to address you on the very important agenda of the day. But before I do that, let me thank the ambassadors for self-determination, the organizers of the event. My profound thanks to the two men behind this powerful organization, the two brothers. I call them the A-team, the one core brothers, Ben and Evan. I thank you so much for bringing this event to fruition. Well, um, let me begin by saying this. Ben and Evans have been at the front line of propagating the cause for safe determination, defending human rights in Nigeria, and calling for the release of Mazin Namdekano, who is the subject matter of this very event today. Of course, the other subject matters such as the right to save determination and the persecution that is being levied against Christians in Nigeria in this current era. Ben and Evans, I thank you and I thank all those who are behind you, seen and unseen. And your professional crew um, and all that and so many other people that I really do not want to mention here. So having said that, I would not burden you with slogans and, or sloganeering. I will not tell you what you know already. I will tell you what you don't know. Or what you know but you don't know all of it. Well, last week I met with Mazin Nam at the headquarters of the Directorate of State Security in Abuja, Nigeria. And I did inform him of this event coming up. And he was very happy. And he asked me to ensure that I speak and do a video to be played to the participants in this event. So today I'm wearing two hats. I'm speaking on behalf of Umunam Dekano. I'm also speaking on my own behalf. My name is Aloy Ejimako. I'm the special counsel to Mazin Namdekano and the indigenous people of Biafra. And I'm speaking to you from a location in Nigeria. The man, Mazin Namdekano, is well known. He's everywhere. He's on Wikipedia. He's an internationally acclaimed freedom fighter. But there are just a few things I need to tell you about him. Who brought him to limelight? was the formation of the indigenous people of Biafra in the United Kingdom in 2012. Simultaneously, he also founded Radio Biafra. And these two organizations were aimed at one thing, liberation for the people of Biafra, or restoration of the former Republic of Biafra that went defunct in 1970. The right to save determination is a right that is guaranteed internationally domestically and continentally. It's within the black letters of Nigerian law at Article 20 of the African Charter on Human and People's Rights. The right to save determination is guaranteed. So the formation of IPOB did not break any law. Not laws of the United Kingdom, not international law, not Nigerian law. But guess what? When Mazin Namdekano, who was born in Nigeria, but who acquired British citizenship later on, came to Nigeria in October 2015, the government of President Muhammadu Buhari 
which had come to power in May, decided to arrest him. He was not arrested between 2012 and 2015 because the government of the day at that time understood that self-determination is not a crime. But the government that came into power in 2015 in May decided that self-determination is going to be treated as a criminal activity. So he was arrested in Lagos. He was charged for treason, also for insulting the president and illegal importation of ready equipment. Three charges. The treason one, they split it into two, treason by himself and treason by conspiracy. This thing went on from 2015 until April 2017, when he was eventually granted bail. So he was detained for nearly 18 months. After granting him bail, he returned to his ancestral home in the southeastern part of Nigeria, and he was enjoying his bail when suddenly between 10 September and 14 September 2017, the Nigerian army, without any justification whatsoever, levied little massive military operations against Mazen Namdekano's ancestral home. That day, he was sitting at home with, a couple, with, with so many people, his family members, including his two elderly parents. The attack was lightning, it was a bleak ridge, it was massive, and it was not the type of an attack you would expect a national military force to levy on a civilian location. But they did. At the end of the day, 28 people lost their lives. Mazin Namdekano sustained injuries, his parents sustained injuries as well, but somehow, by the grace of God, they all managed to escape. From there, the rest is history. And because there was a national and international manhunt for him by the security forces, which rules of engagement was to shoot, not to maim. If you see Namdekan, if you encounter him anywhere, shoot not to maim. Not to maim, but shoot to kill. That's what they want there to do on 10 September, but they didn't succeed. But it went on, they went on in a manhood. So Namdekan was forced to flee the municipal boundaries of Nigeria in search of safe heaven overseas. Eventually, in May 2021, he settled in Kenya, he entered Nairobi and settled in Kenya somewhere. He never knew that Nigerian security forces, the international branch of it, were laying in wait for him. They led an ambush for him. So on 19th June 2021, he drove himself to Jomo Kenyatta International Airport on a personal errand. As soon as he drove into the parking lot and alighted from his vehicle, several well-armed security men suspected to be of a mixture of Nigerian and Kenyan security forces swooped on him, grabbed him, abducted him, and put him forcibly in a vehicle and drove away. Well, they didn't take him to the police station. They didn't take him to immigration because he was a foreigner. He should have been taken to immigration. They didn't take him to any official law enforcement facility. They took him to a secret location in Nairobi, a non-official secret location. So in effect, they disappeared him. And they kept him at that secret location for a whole eight days. And those eight days, he endured horrendous torture. All these are matters of record between the various tribunals and courts before whom this matter has been brought. I cannot begin to give you all the details. Horrendous torture in violation of basic human rights, in violation of the laws of Kenya, Nigeria, and the international community. When Namdekan was abducted on 19th June 2021, the proper thing that should have been done 
is to take him to a police station, from there to a court. And then if you wanted him back in Nigeria, you subject him to what is called extradition proceedings. This is a basic tenet of the law that you see in the laws of any, of any nation. Kenya has an extradition act to which Mazin Nam de Kano should have been subjected. But guess what? They didn't do that. They rather disappeared him for eight days, tortured him to their heart's content. And on 27th June, they secretly brought him out from this location and took him through the back doors, evading Kenyan immigration, direct to the tarmac of Jomo Kenya, Jomo Kenya International Airport, Nairobi, where a private plane was waiting. They bundled him into the plane, chained him to the chair, and everything. He endured five, six hours flight from Nairobi uh, to Kenya in the most excruciating circumstances. They arrived in Nigeria late in the evening and the plane flew back to Nairobi. Uh, they took him to the headquarters of the National Intelligence Agency in Abuja, where he spent the first night with all the lights left on to assure his maximum discomfort. The following day, they transferred him to the headquarters of Director of State Security in Abuja. And on the third day, they brought him before the Federal High Court in Abuja. The Federal High Court was well aware that Mazin Nam de Kano has counsel of record. It was an open case, it wasn't a new case, a pre-existing case. But the Federal High Court decided to conduct the arraignment in violation of his constitutional right to counsel. And that arraignment led to the indefinite detention with which we are struggling today. Anyways, taking you back a few steps, the little military invasion of 2017 was not unrequited, judicially speaking. I took the matter before two tribunals, or a tribunal and a court. First, I took it to the African Commission on Human and People's Rights, which rendered a decision in March 2018 condemning the action and calling it a violation of the African Charter. And they wrote a president to the president of Nigeria, they wrote a letter to the president of Nigeria requesting him or directing him, they used diplomatic language, but the decision was there that what you did is wrong, so you, you need to roll it back. You need to reverse everything you have done, which includes declaration of IPOB as a terrorist organization and hounding their members as criminals. The African Commission held that what Nigerian government was doing was persecution, not prosecution. That the IPOB and its members simply possess an inconvenient political opinion which the Nigerian government was seeking to suppress by means of punishment of some sort. And they asked or directed Nigerian government to reverse itself. Nigerian government never did, rather it escalated. Well, subsequently, I went to a local court, a high court in Abia State in eastern Nigeria, I sued the Federal Republic of Nigeria, the Nigerian Army, and other parties who were confederates in that attack of September 2017. And in January 2022, fortunately for us, we won. The High Court made an order. The High Court reached a judgment that what happened to Namde Kano in September 2017 was a flagrant violation of his constitutional right to life and constitutional right to his uh, privacy. And the court proceeded to make an order ordering the federal government of Nigeria, or Federal Republic of Nigeria, to pay him a compensation of one billion Nigerian Naira, which is over one million US dollars. The court also ordered the Federal Republic of Nigeria and the President of Nigeria to issue a public apology to be published in three national Nigerian newspapers to Mazin and the Kano. None of this has happened. 
So we kept that aside. So when they brought Mazin Nam the Kano, forcibly from Kenya, without extradition proceedings, I characterized it an act of extraordinary rendition. Initially, there was a misunderstanding, a broad, widespread misunderstanding by vast majorities of Nigerians who were mounting the cliche, Mazin Nam the Kano, extradited from Kenya. No, that was wrong. It wasn't. I told people it wasn't. It was extraordinarily renditioned or rendered. And that is against international law, Kenyan law, and laws of the Federation of Nigeria. So while his criminal trial was making its way slowly at Abuja, with all the several amendments the government was bringing, they walked away from treasonable felony insulting the president, importation of radio equipment, and bomb to terrorism. That's how it happened. And they did this seven times. Seven amendments. If Nandikan was guilty, why is it taking so long to bring him to trial between 2015 and today? That is eight years. So what he's undergoing is not really a judicial trial. It's a trial by ordeal trial by fire, imprisonment before conviction. They just want to get as many years of jail time out of him as possible because they know that with the evidence available, conviction will be impossible. And that was made worse by the extraordinary rendition, which I took also as a civil violation to a federal high court in Nigeria. And in October 2022, the Federal High Court came down with a judgment that extraordinary rendition was a violation of his constitutional rights, his fundamental rights, and they awarded him 500 million Nigerian Naira. That's about $800,000. So all around, everywhere that this matter has gone to, including in July, 2022, before the um, Human Rights Council at the United Nations, the Human Rights Council United Nations came down with an opinion that what happened to Mazin Namdekano in Kenya and that brought him to Nigeria is a very grave violation of international law and they directed that he should be released unconditionally. And of course, the Court of Appeal in Nigeria did come down with a similar judgment. In same October 2022, discharging Mazin Namdekan of all charges. 